As covered earlier, the hierarchy order is account, property, and lastly, profile. A property is data that's been organized according to certain settings. It could be a website, point of sales system, or a mobile application. So let's go ahead and take a look at user management under property for this particular portion. So as with the user settings that can be applied at account level, these can also be applied at property level. The process is exactly the same. So while we won't go over that again, it's important that you understand that this means you can assign certain users to specific web properties. For example, you may want your digital account manager to see all web properties, but perhaps the mobile manager may only have the permission to see data for the mobile application. Note that you will see the permissions and where they're assigned when you look at account level permissions. When you use permissions at one level, they will apply to subordinate levels of that same account. The main takeaway from this part right here that we're looking at, this is tracking info, is that this is where the tracking code lives. This area is also where you'd set up a new web property that you want to track in Google Analytics. If for some reason the site is updated and the tracking code's removed, this is where you could retrieve it. The tracking code needs to be pasted into the head section of your website on every page you want to track. If the code isn't placed on a page, then Google Analytics will not collect data for that page. Once the code has been added, you'll start to see data in real-time reports. Google processes data every four hours, so you can see same-day results, but Google's documentation says that data will be populated in approximately 24 hours. One of the challenges we face as digital marketers is the ability to track users across multiple devices. This data can tell you about where your users are surfing on specific devices and can drive home where your ad dollars should be spent, so it's really important. Google Analytics combats this struggle with their user ID feature. The user ID is a piece of data unique to a visitor that can be used to gather statistics from multiple devices and sessions. The user ID associates the data to one unique user. In order to use this feature, your website must be capable of producing unique IDs. Once these IDs are created, there needs to be a method of assigning these IDs to users. This has to take place in the code of your site. Finally, these IDs need to be sent back to Google Analytics. Setting this up on the Google Analytics side is simple. You just need to use the universal analytics tracking code. After that, allow the user ID in your account, implement it in the tracking code, and create a view for user IDs in your account. If you want to view this data, you will have to create a user ID view. Going back to the hierarchy of the account, this view would be under the property. The data in the view would be filtered and only contain hits, including the user ID. One of the most common questions asked about this particular feature is what happens when a user is not logged in? The answer to that is when a user is not logged in, Google Analytics defaults back to the client ID automatically because this ID is not unique. Since it isn't a unique ID, this results in a scenario where a user can have both a user ID and a client ID. Google ratifies this by using a process called session unification. The session unification feature associates hits with a user ID if they are in the same session, meaning if a user clicks around to part of a website prior to logging in, these hits will be associated with that user ID. Here's how to set it up. Enable user ID tracking. This is step one, agreeing to the terms and conditions. You can't really go forward unless you do. So go ahead and click on and hit next step. Adding the correct JavaScript tracking code and then creating the user ID view of your data, which you can go ahead and push forward right there. Teaches you how to do your tracking code. And then after that, you would just create the view ID and you'd be done. So, Let's go to session settings. Um, session settings are where you update how your visits are calculated in Google Analytics. These settings are a significant piece of analytics tracking. To fully understand session settings, you need to understand how Google Analytics works. Google Analytics receives hit level data from the JavaScript code you put on each page. Google Analytics then 
calculates metrics passed on this initial data hit. The data hit is really just a GIF request that is sent to the servers with information about the hit. Part of the information includes visitor level data. Visitor level data includes information such as city, time, browser, and other metrics. Uh, but what is important to understand is that a session is made up of hits. A visitor can visit that website many, many times. When the visitor, however, visits more than twice, they become a returning visitor. Behind the scenes, when a user visits a website, Google Analytics looks for a cookie. If there isn't a browser cookie, Google, Google Analytics makes one and then the data gets sent to Google Analytics for processing. This means that if a user returns to the site within 30 minutes, the session continues. Of course, you can customize the session timeout handling in your Google Analytics settings to meet your particular business's needs. So, um, from here, we're going to go into organic search sources. And what that is, is organic search sources is a way to customize search engine recognition within Google Analytics. Google Analytics will report on traffic coming from almost all search engines, including Google, Bing, Yandex, Baidu, so on and so forth. All the major ones are covered. These engines that are the engines that are not recognizable to Google are searches coming from local ISPs or from meta search engines like Dogpile or something along that lines. The last way that a search could be unrecognizable to Google is if it comes from a toolbar. Some companies lock down computers for employees at work and all searches must go through a toolbar that cannot be removed. Customizing this area of Google Analytics will put the data in the organic search traffic report instead of the referrals report. So let's talk about the referral exclusion list just for a second. Referral traffic comes in from other domains. If you have a link on xyz.com and people click on that link, you will see xyz.com listed as a referral traffic source. The downside is that some sites will see their own site on this list. A lot of e-commerce clients use third-party shopping carts. So if you don't add these URLs to Google Analytics, the customer may check out come back to the website and be listed as a referral. The other downside of referral traffic is that it's considered a new session. So keep this in mind when you're adding to the exclusions list. Your session traffic may go down, but you're actually seeing a more accurate view of your site's total traffic. So from here, we're going to go into the search term exclusion list. Google Analytics tracks search terms that deliver traffic to your website. If a user is logged in, Google won't show the keyword. Instead, you'll see the not provided search term. With the search term exclusion list, you can choose terms that you do not want to see in your search term reports and have Google Analytics classify the traffic as direct. You may want to consider doing this for branded traffic. Uh, Google Analytics can be set up to track your social media properties. Using Google Analytics, you break down the data and see goals and metrics for users who arrived at your site using social media. Setting up analytics to track social is easy. Just go to the social settings in the admin area and input the URLs of your site's social media properties. After this is done, you'll see data populated in the social reports section pretty much immediately. A nice thing about Google Analytics is that it automatically recognizes over 100 different social media URLs. So for the most popular social media referrals, you won't need to use this section at all. So from here on out, we go to Chapter 2, Section 3. And what we'll be covering up in the next section is we'll be going over a comprehensive view of your view settings.